Hey guys, it's Maurice here. Welcome back to another product review. And today I'll be doing a review on the Vigian Dragonfly F1 Pro. Now, per my usual disclaimer, no one sent this out to me. I bought it with my own money. So, any opinions that will come up from this video is uh, by my own self only. So, before we start, I want to talk about the packaging of the mouse. Vigian went with this very, very blue packaging. I have no idea why it's blue, but if you look at the packaging there's a dragonfly silhouette there vgn 3025 49 grams and on the back here there's a big pro so the reason why the quote-unquote pro marker here uh, is there is because there's three different version of the vgn f1 so normal f1 the f1 pro and the pro max and the only difference is on the mcu and the battery life so the f1 uses the compact mcu with rated battery hours of around 40 hours meanwhile the f1 pro uses the nordic mcu with up to 4000 hertz polling rate once you get the 4000 hertz dongle and the battery life is increased by 60 hours and then the f1 pro max uses the same mcu up to 4000 hertz polling rate as well but with a bigger battery life I think about 100 hours so like 500 milliamp hour instead of 250 milliamp hour battery well aside from the mcu battery life and the performance everything i say here can relate to the f1 and the f1 pro max but i own the f1 pro so let's start with the shape of the mouse it's a large i won't say large it's a medium uh, size mouse that is very very similar to something like the deluxe m800 now unfortunately i do not i no longer own a deluxe m800 so i cannot really do a side-by-side -side comparison but based on feel and based on elo shapes measurement this just look and feel like the deluxe m800 with a few exception of course being a very very noticeable comfort groove like, i love the comfort groove on the f1 pro it just feels very very nice to play with very lock on and almost all the time when i just put my uh, hand on the mouse i get a very consistent grip because of that comfort groove so the shape itself is a very flat slightly wider slightly uh, longer shape than things like the hot ES, but again it's a very flat mouse so meaning this is, is very very suitable for fingertip and s some slight of claw grip i use relax claw and it fits per uh, perfectly fine for me i wish it's slightly higher but that's about it um, but if you prefer palm i would say go for something else or if your hand is slightly uh, bigger and you want to like claw it might be a bit too small uh, because of the length and it's very very flat um, here's again the side profile of both mouse hardy as being much much taller than the f1 pro but again it's wider which is really really good so with my 19 by 10 and a half centimeter hands i've been playing on a kind of mixture of fingertip and a relaxed claw but mostly on relaxed claw with the f1 pro now the build quality of this mouse is surprisingly very very good uh, just like the previous mouse that i reviewed the dharma shock m3 there is slight flexing and uh, you can actuate side buttons from pressing it too hard but aside from that small issue the mouse itself is built quite solid there is very very minor flexing on the bottom but no min no flexing on the top and button play is very very solid slight pre and post travel and overall the build quality of the f1 pro is really really good um, it does feel quite hollow quite cheap because it uses a very very thin plastic is to hit um, that weight target of 49 grams and on my skill agree with that with the grip tape i still get 49 grams which is really really impressive and making 49 grams medium mouse is really really solid it feels super lightweight here's the hard yes at 49 grams and it just feels much denser compared to the f1 pro all right now let's talk about the texture of the mouse and this texture is honestly quite decent like i wouldn't say it's as grippy as something from endgame or zawi or even the newer razor coating i wouldn't say that but it reminds me a lot of the hard yes coating well it's grippy enough but it's still quite slippery that if your hand sweats uh you will 100 percent <laughs> lose your grip on this mouse but it's not as bad as something like the m3 where that one just feel very very slick and basically impossible to get a grip on the only reason i use the grip tape on the f1 pro despite me saying good things about the texture is it just adds a little bit more stability more comfort more lock on one it fixes one issue with me for the f1 which is this 
top ledge right here. It's really uncomfortable when I relax claw because I sit in between where the curve starts and the flat portion of the mouse. So with this uh, grip tape available here, it just kind of helped me out to fight that problem, making it a bit more comfortable than stock configuration. But again, texture wise, it's pretty decent. I won't complain for the price at all. Uh, I actually played without grip tape for the first week and on the second week I played with grip tapes, which is why you can see it started to get very, very dirty because you know, it's white. So texture very solid now i want to talk about the button of the f1 pro they are using what's called klge 2.0 not the kill go on the end game gear not the kill 8.0s i don't know what switches these are but in hand this does not feel like kill 8.0s it doesn't feel like Juan or blue shell pink dot it's a lot more louder a lot more tactile feeling a lot more snappy but also feels heavier to actuate and not lightweight like the other switches that i mentioned earlier but the pre and the post travel is again very solid so very minor pre like it's basically non-existent and a very very slight post travel again really really good button implementation here this feels really really nice to play on uh, spamming in league is good spamming uh, left click in, in valorant is good and just playing overall with the switches is very very nice this scroll wheel again i have no idea what this scroll wheel is but this reminds me a lot of the g pro x super light scroll wheel very very loud very very tactile it's not heavy it's not light but if you don't like loud scroll wheel this might not be for you like if you prefer something much more quieter like the f1 pro does not have that this curve is very very loud but it's very good to use in game jumping in valorant feels good and overall just it feels amazing middle click is not as heavy as the hot es plus making it so that i can actually easily use this in game so no complaint there as well and these side buttons have practically no problem there is slight post travel on mouse button 4 over here but mouse button 5 and mouse button 4 both have very very minor pre-travel and no post travel on mouse button 5 mouse button 4 have some post travel but aside from that again the button implementation here on the f1 pro is really really good now the sensor is also quite nice i have done a lot of testing comparing this to the dharma shark m3 to the razor rubber mini to the hot es plus and the sensor performance here is really really good there is a DPI deviation of 1% and the mouse stability with motion sync enable is really, really good comparing it to other high-end mouse as well. So no complaints in performance. And just like the intro that you guys have seen, the gameplay that I had with the um, F1 Pro here is really, really solid, really good mouse in terms of uh, snappiness, um, flicking, tracking, everything just feels amazing. So no complaint there at all, like no complaint whatsoever. The upcoming 4000 hertz pulling rate might improve performance even more but as of now as of this review coming out i don't think anyone has the 4000 hertz pulling dongle yet so i cannot do a review on that or say how good the 4000 hertz pulling rate is but once i have uh, once i have my hand on the pulling rate dongle i will do a update review on the f1 pro so stay tuned for that now while we're down here let's talk about the skates and why i have changed it so in the packaging i forgot to mention they include grip tape and an extra skate. And the good thing about F1 Pro is you can see they have two different layouts for the skates. One top, one big uh, top and bottom or four corner skate design. Now it comes stock in the one big top and bottom layout and I find it to be quite underwhelming, especially on my Pulsar ES1. It just feels very sluggish, very tugginess and I don't like how it felt. So I did not use the four corner skates because I don't want to ruin it. it seems kind of nice as a spare so instead what i did is i took out the pads and swap it out with tiger ice dots and now this feels amazing to play with so i would say that the skate is not as good as something like the m3 which is not a huge bar high bar to begin with but i would say it's good enough if you like the control but as someone who preferred the speediness of it i think the stock skate is a little bit too tuggy for my liking while we're also down here i'll talk about the battery life i don't know why it matters if it's down here there's also a dongle storage by the way but the battery life on the f1 pro is quite solid at a thousand hertz pulling with motion sync enable i was able to hit about five days of battery life on a single charge which is quite solid it's the same battery life as things like the pulsar x2 and whatnot so quite quite all right but once the 4000 hertz pulling rate comes out i think you will have to charge this daily which is why i think if you prefer uh, the 4000 hertz pulling rate that's going to come out in the future and get yourself the fm pro max maybe that will help you out better in terms of getting maybe two or three days of battery life instead of just one 
but overall the battery life is quite solid charges using type c that is included in the box with a very very soft cable and overall the f1 pro is really really solid the software is all right it's quite minimal it's very clean nothing not nothing major to talk about like the dharma shock m3 and i would happily actually recommend you guys to try out the f1 pro there's really nothing wrong with this i think the shape could be hit or miss depends on how high you want your hump to be or how narrow you want your width to be but as a safe choice for the price that they're asking for and make keys you can get this for about 30 to 40 bucks i think and at that price point it's an amazing uh money like amazing value to performance gaming mouse that money can buy so hope you guys enjoyed this review uh, i would probably keep using the f1 pro but for now i am still dailying the hard es plus but even then just using this two side by side it's, it's crazy how something uh, how the hard es is like 110 dollars and this is like 45 i think so really really impressive i think vision did a really good job with the dragonfly f1 pro and uh, if you guys have any question regarding the game, must leave that in the comment section down below. I will answer them as fast as I can, as soon as I can. And uh, if you guys want to help me out, like the video if you like it, dislike the video if you don't like it. Both feedback helped me out a lot. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, why not? I do this mouse review often enough as long as I can get my hands on a new mouse. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.